Dr. Joachim Radua, good afternoon. You are, you are one of the 10 scientists selected from the AXA Research Fund COVID-19 call for projects. Your research is about anxiety, depression, and coping behaviors during the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown. Can you share with us the main objectives you aim to achieve with this support, please? Of course. Uh, in a previous survey, we found that most individuals reported mild to moderate anxiety or depressive symptoms during the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown. However, we also found that some relatively simple behaviors, such as following a healthy balanced diet, were associated with decreased symptoms. The main objective of the uh, current project is to further investigate the relationship between the behaviors and the symptoms. We will recruit a representative sample of Spanish adults, and we will ask them to complete short surveys every two weeks about their behaviors and symptoms. We want to know which behaviors make people resilient against subsequent anxiety and depressive symptoms. Uh, I think that our results will allow producing evidence-based clear recommendations on coping behaviors. We hope that they will help the population to have less anxiety and depressing symptoms during the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown. Thank you, Dr. Radua. This is very clear and we certainly need resilience against anxiety and depressions in these times of uncertainty. And your project will be very helpful to cope um, with the, their symptoms. I had another question. Concretely, how do you intend to work with practitioners to, so they uh, can apply your findings? and? Um, how do you plan to make um, your findings benefit the maximum number of people suffering from anxiety and depression linked to the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, well, I would this study as we aim to study the whole adult population. That said, uh, we plan to share the recommendations from our study with health, prof uh, health professionals so that they can give more specific and helpful advice to patients. We also plan to share these recommendations with policymakers or other professionals who may play an important role during this exceptional emergency. Well, no doubt, lots of people will be happy to find recommendations to feel better for sure. Now, um, looking beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, I want you to ask how applicable to other crises is your project and uh, what are the differences from a, a traumatic event such as a terrorist a terrorist attack or an explosion, for instance? Uh, well, uh, there are obvious differences between the COVID-19 pandemic and other potentially traumatic events and thus some results from our study may not be directly translatable to other scenarios. We know that most individuals who suffer a single traumatic event are doing rel relatively well a few months after the event, and there exist some specific recommendations for these people. But the long-term consequences of a long pandemic are unknown. Since we will be following the same people for one year, we will have a better estimate of such long-term consequences. Therefore, we'll be able to develop better recommendations for those dealing with similar situations in the future. Uh, let's hope that this is the last pandemic we live worldwide. But in case it isn't, we want to be better equipped uh, to cope uh, with it. Besides our study, uh, we study behaviors that are usually considered positive, uh, such as following a healthy balanced diet or pursuing hobbies. Therefore, I think that these behaviors might be advisable, even if uh, they don't have uh, an additional benefit for a specific type of crisis. Uh, to sum up, we want to know which behaviors might help people cope with the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown. But I believe that these behaviors may also help cope to a certain extent with other types of crises. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Radua, for your time and all the information today. All the best for conducting your research and keep in touch for telling us more about your first results. Goodbye. Thank you, Steve, and goodbye. <laughs>